<laughs> okay, so then we have the, uh, uh, the this is the meta meditation that comes up here. Yeah, you have a heart full of love for everyone in the world, abundant, expansive, limitless, uh, free of enmity and ill will. That is how you should train it. I won't go through that now. I will go through this particular formula later on, and so you get some idea what is going on there. Yeah. So, but for now, we will just uh, carry on. And now comes some nice similes that uh, explain this in more detail. And uh, so, the first one, suppose a person was to come along carrying a spade and a basket and say, I shall make this great earth be without earth. And they would dig all over, scatter all over, spit all over, and urinate all over, saying, be without earth, be without earth. So, <laughs> I find this very funny. I don't know. <laughs> they got to kind of dig away the whole earth. That's kind of that's a very interesting idea. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah. So let, let's, let's, I'll just read out the other side of the, uh, of the simile before I... Carry on. So, what do you think, mendicants? Could that person make this great earth be without earth? No, sir. Why is that? Because this earth is deep and limitless. It is not easy to make it be without earth. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. Yeah, so we should be like the earth. That is the point here. We should be like this vast earth. And the idea is that you create a mind that is really large and limitless and full of benevolence. And if, if then someone comes and tries to dig into your mind and spit all of, spit all over it, whatever it is, urinate or whatever, then it, this is kind of obviously the, uh, the bad words. Yeah, This is kind of a simile for the bad words here. You're, you're not affected because your mind is so large and so developed and so strong and so solid that there is no way that the other person can have any effect on the mind. So you should have a mind like the great earth. It's a kind of nice, nice idea, isn't it? Large and developed. And whenever some tiny person comes and tries to kind of irritate you, there is no effect because your mind is so developed in this way. Um, <clears throat> so in the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticize you. The speech may be timely or untimely, true or false, gentle or harsh, beneficial or harmful, from a heart of love or from secret hate. When others criticize you, they may do so in any of these ways. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will be unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to, the, to that person. And with them as a basis, we'll meditate spreading a heart like like the earth, yeah, heart like the earth, to everyone in the world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That is how you should train that. So you have a heart like the earth, expansive, limitless, large, deep, and profound, and there's no way that you can make that heart like the earth. You can make it uh, shake or become upset because of a little bit of badness coming from the outside. Okay, next simile. Suppose a person was to come along with dye such as red lac, turmeric, indigo, and rose madder, and say, I shall draw pictures on the sky, making pictures appear there. I don't know what this rose madder is, but anyway, it's probably some kind of colder, I suppose. So... Uh, um, What do you think, mendicants? Could that person draw pictures on the sky? No, sir. Why is that? Because the sky is formless and invisible. It is not easy to draw pictures there. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. So again, it has this nice understatement. It is not easy to draw pictures on the sky. <laughs> it's kind of... It's kind of, kind of funny. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, your mind is the same. The mind is kind of 
uh, formless and invisible like the uh, the sky there is no cracks in it there there is no there is nothing that kind of can it can stick to yeah the mind is kind of becoming like teflon there's no sticking point anywhere there is just like the sky just like you cannot draw in thin air yeah trying to draw on thin air is going to be pretty useless in the same way you know the mind is kind of uh, unstickable uh, and doesn't hold on to anything at all now. So you have the mind-like space, yeah? A mind-like, yeah, formless and invisible like space. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might, might criticize you, yeah? So the same, the whole same paragraph uh, comes over again uh, one more time. Uh. Aru, be in Anidasana. Okay. Suppose a person was to come along carrying a blazing grass torch and say, I shall burn and scorch the river Ganges with this blazing grass torch. What do you think, mendicants? Could that person burn and scorch the river Ganges with a blazing grass torch? No, sir. Why is that? Because the river Ganges is deep and limitless. It's not easy to burn and scorch it with a blazing grass torch. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. You can imagine the, the river Ganges. Again, it's an enormous river. Yeah, two kilometers wide, roughly at Patna. It's just, the amount of water is just almost unfathomable. And so you, your mind is a bit like that. Your mind is cool, yeah, full of this cool water uh, running down through the, over the Ganges plain. Yeah, this is kind of the mind. Uh, and if a little bit of irritation, like a small mosquito, a little blazing grass torch, yeah, some bad words. Uh, is it the blazing grass torch here? Is the bad words or criticism coming from someone speaking in the five kinds of wrong ways? Uh, yeah, then, the, of course, it won't matter to you at all. It's kind of irrelevant. Uh, the blaze, I like this, uh, this kind of the uh, optimism here, coming with a blazing grass torch. You're going to burn away the river Ganges with that. Uh, and uh, you can't. Yeah, your mind is broad, wide, large, cool, yeah, full of the anti torch. The torch is hot, the water is cool, and of course it will put out that torch in no time because of the power of the river Ganges. Mm -hmm. So have a mind like the river Ganges uh, as you flow on in the world, like the large rivers. Uh, yeah, what does it say in the, in the beautiful, um, a beautiful verse in the Sutta Nipata or something like that, it says something about the, uh, the, it is the small brooks that make all the noise, the large rivers flow silently. Yeah, it's a beautiful saying from the suttas. Uh, and the idea, it is that it's the sages of the world, they are silent. Uh, they flow through the world without making much noise. Uh, and there's all the kind of the uh, people who don't have so much wisdom. Uh, they are the noisemakers in the world. Uh, and so be like the river Ganges, this large, broad thing that flows through the world, silent, cool, immeasurable and deep. Uh, and no grass torch can kind of touch it, uh, irritate it or do anything to it. Uh, this is kind of the idea here. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticize you. Suppose there was a cat skin bag that was rubbed, well rubbed, very well rubbed, soft, silky, rid of rustling and crackling. And a person comes along carrying a stick or a stone and they say, I shall make this soft catskin bag rustle, crackle with this stick or stone. What do you think, mendicants? Could that person make that soft catskin bag rustle and crackle with a stick or stone? No, sir. Why is that? Because that catskin bag is rubbed, well rubbed, very well rubbed, soft, silky, rid of rustling and crackling. It is not easy to make it rustle or crackle with a stick or a stone. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. So, um, I don't know about that particular simile. I must admit, I have never really understood that simile. I don't know what the catskin bag is to start with. Do you have catskin bags in Malaysia? 
No, yeah, we haven't seen a cat skin bag before. Yeah. No, not sure. No. Say, say again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, some kind of pouch without any rustling or crackling. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So uh, I think catskin bag probably was something they had two and a half thousand years ago in India. They probably don't, I don't know if they still exist uh, in, in India. Maybe they still have catskin bags in India. Uh, but uh, we get the idea. Yeah, it's a bag which is kind of soft. The leather is soft. It doesn't crackle in any way. Yeah. And once you try to make it crackle, there's no, no way you can make it crackle. In the same way, you can't make the mind crackle. Uh, yeah, the mind doesn't crackle under pressure. Uh, the pressure of bad words, the pressure of bad actions, the pressure of... Uh, external influences, there is no crackling, your mind withstands everything, there is no, uh, no way that you're going to give in to that, uh, you will withstand your ground uh, with a mind that is pure and clear and aloof and powerful. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticize you, the speech may be timely or untimely, true or false, gentle or harsh, beneficial or harmful. Uh, from the love, heart of love or from secret hate. When others criticize you, they may do so in any of these five ways. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will remain unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person. And with them as a basis, we'll meditate spreading a heart like a catskin bag to everyone in the world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That is how you should train. Hmm. Okay, so now comes the final simile, I think. I'm not sure, I haven't looked what comes next, I assume so. Ah, okay, let's expand this one, kind of get it nice and uh, full screen mode. Okay, so here comes the uh, simile which the whole sutta is based on. Yeah, this is the famous simile of the saw, and I did mention it before. Uh, uh, and now it comes the real deal. You get the real deal now. It's always best to have the real deal. Uh, and uh, what is interesting about this sutta or this particular simile is that it is mentioned elsewhere in the suttas. Yeah, very often what you find is that uh, some part of the sutta will refer to other parts of the suttas, uh, you know, as if these are known similes. And this kind of happens quite a lot, uh, references back and forth. Uh, and uh, what that means is that the suttas are like a complete whole, yeah? They must have been spoken by kind of one person because of all this referencing back and forth. Uh, they were known, bits and pieces that were known about each other. And so we get this feeling of this coherent completeness of the suttas. That's how this referencing actually works. Yeah? And so whole suttas are referred to, or similes are referred to, or individual statements are referred to, or verses, and these kind of things. And that's kind of fascinating to understand the uh, completeness of the suttas. But here comes the uh, kind of the pinnacle of demands. Yeah? This is what the Buddha demands, not demand, but he asks of us that we kind of incline our mind in this particular direction, to kind of have a mind as in the simile of the song. So uh, here we go, the simile of the song. So even if low down bandits, gangsters, uh, evil people, uh, were to sever you limb from limb, anyone who had a malevolent thought on that account would not be following my instructions. What do you think? Yeah. Is that Possible? Can do? Cannot? Maybe? Yeah. You, <laughs> the, the simile of the saw, right? You, you're sawing this person apart, limb by limb from limb. Yeah. First, you kind of your half, your quarter of your arm, then the other half of your arm, then the kind of three quarters of your arm, and the other arm, and your legs. Yeah. And they cut off your ears and your nose, maybe. Yeah and they cut off whatever they can cut off without you dying. You're still alive. You keep alive as long as possible just to torture you uh, as they do this. Uh, evil. If that happens, you should train like this. Uh, our minds will remain unaffected. Uh, we will blurt out no bad words. Uh, 
Yeah, you don't say, go away, bandits. You say, welcome, bandits. <laughs> we will remain full of compassion with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will remain spreading a heart of love to that person. <laughs> and with them as a basis, we will remain spreading a heart full of love to everyone in the world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That is how you should train. So that is how the Buddha tells us we should train. Are you still a disciple of the Buddha? <laughs> 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 so, um, let's just do the very last line here. Huh? Actually, no, it's still not the very last line. Huh? Let's just, 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 just stop there for a minute. I, this is very powerful because what this is saying really is that there is nothing in the world that should stop us from having love and compassion. That is basically what it is saying. Yeah? Yeah? And uh, you may wonder, how can this possibly, how can this be possible? Huh? How can you do this kind of thing? Yeah? And you should never think quite like that. How is it possible? Instead, you should think, how can I move in that direction? That is the right way to think. Because it is impossible to understand the mind of someone who has deep samadhi. It's impossible to understand the mind of someone who is enlightened. We can't get our minds around that. And so instead of trying to understand how is this possible, okay, I will take this on confidence that maybe it can be done. But what I know I can do is to move gradually in that direction. That can be done, yeah? You can become less uh, upset by kind of the ordinary things in life. You can become more at ease with other people saying bad things to you. Right? And then you can head in that direction. And that is what you should be doing. Yeah? And so how is this even possible? How can this possibly be done? And again, it comes back to this idea yeah, that actually understanding the causality involved here. These people are obviously really bad people. No one goes around kind of cutting people up limb from limb. Yeah? If you do that, you must be pretty depraved and you have, you know, something is going on in your mind that is really bad. And so the way to do it is to understand that actually these people who do this to you, they are the ones who actually have the problem. If you have that kind of mind that you're willing to do this to someone else, yeah, and if they do it to you, yeah, you are a good person. They're going to make lots of bad karma if they do it to you, or they do it to me. That's also bad, yeah. I am also quite a good person, not just you, but me too. <laughs> so, yeah, so if they do it to us who are good people, then of course they have no idea what they're doing. It's kind of madness. It's a kind of a mind whereby you create so much bad karma. You're cutting apart a bad person. They have no idea what they're doing. They are crazy at that moment. And so you want to tell them, listen, what you're doing is stupid. Don't cut me apart. You are the ones who suffer. You think I will suffer. But actually, if you cut me apart, I will only live for half a minute. Then I'll be dead anyway. Yeah. And then I'll be dead and I'll be reborn in Devaloka because I have metta for you guys, even as you cut me apart. So there's no problem for me. I'll be all right. You are the guys who will be in trouble. Yeah. If you can think like that, then the whole problem is kind of solved, right? Okay, there is pain, sure, the pain is even very severe, but it won't be that long before you are kind of, a, you know, really happy and in a blissful place. You can deal with it. But these guys, where they get, where they get reborn, it is not very nice. Lots of fires, lots of kind of, uh, you know, very hot, very kind of unpleasant place where you get reborn because of that. And so again, this is the idea of depersonalizing it a little bit. It's got nothing to do with you. If someone cuts you apart, limb from limb, it is not your problem. Yeah? It is not because uh, you have done anything wrong. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with them. They are the fools. Yeah? It is their background, their mind, their conditioning that is coming out. And so you don't take it personally. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with them. And then you can start to have compassion when you see it in this way. Yeah? So this is what we are aiming for. Yeah? And this is where we are moving. Yeah? Don't think it can't be done. Just think, okay, I will move in that direction. Then you are on the right track. Yeah. So let's see how this all ends. Um, if you frequently reflect on this advice, the simile of the saw, do you see any criticism, large or small, that you could not endure? No, sir. 
So mendicants, you should frequently reflect on this advice, the simile of the Soma. This will be for your lasting welfare and happiness, sir. This is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, the mendicants, the monastics were happy with what the Buddha said. Okay, everyone, so let's have another break and uh, we'll come back for the Q&A session at uh, 4.30. Yeah.